So we know a circle has an infinite number of sides. Uh, I had an idea today that it was in, since there's different types of infinity and infinity is not really even or odd, uh, a proof that a circle, though it has infinite sides, has an even amount of infinite sides. Um, the idea behind this is if you were to imagine a circle and to take cross sections of it, that those lengths of cross sections, they would have, they'd be lines, so two dimensional lines, uh, I'm sorry, one dimensional lines. Um, the idea is that for any, no matter how you rotate the circle, it won't be lopsided. So if you take the uh, very bottom part and the very top part, that those, the uh, one-dimensional line, in this case, zero, they will in fact be the same length. So they won't be like, one won't be uh, ten times smaller than the previous one or whatever. Otherwise it wouldn't really be a circle, it would be lopsided, wouldn't it? Okay, so here's my idea behind the proof. We have a triangle and a square. A triangle has an odd number of sides, a square has an even number of sides. Let me just draw these shapes out real quick. Uh, then we have the pentagon, odd number of sides. Hexagon, even number of sides. Heptagon, odd number, and I'm going to stop with octagon just for the sake of example. But I do want to do at least these um, six to get my point across. So real quick, let me rotate all these into the proper orientation for this video and the octagon last whoops okay that's about that's close enough for this video okay so something you'll notice about any odd sided gone is that if we were to draw the shape using these cross sections that I mentioned, meaning we start with one line and then we have an infinite number of lines that are a little bit smaller each time, but they're all centered along this like straight line type object that goes straight through our end gone. Boom, 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 all the way up until we reach a certain height where the width of the line is in fact zero. We will get a triangle. So with any odd numbered gone, odd and gone, so the triangle, the pentagon, the heptagon, or the three gone, five gone, seven gone, uh, we start with a base and we get to zero. And with any even number gone, we start with a base and we end with that same base, the same length. So, that said, if we did this out to infinity and we had an infinity gone, if it was odd, then this one up here would in fact be absolute zero, not the temperature, but just the width of the line would be perfectly zero, and this base would be a certain amount more. Um, as you can see with all odd numbered gons, the base is larger than the top, which is zero. Yeah, it gets smaller each time, especially when you make the uh, width of these objects the same. If I made the width of this like 70, and the width of our heptagon also 70, this base does in fact decrease in size, but the upper base, the top, is always zero. It's always a point, a one-dimensional I'm sorry, a zero dimensional, it's just a vertice. So if a circle which has infinite sides uh, was an odd number of infinite sides, then the top of the circle um, would be zero. It would just be a point, the absolute smallest form of zero in geometry. And the bottom side would not. It would be a two dimensional um, line, I'm sorry, a one dimensional line with a length of approaching zero, but they wouldn't be exact. Uh, they wouldn't be equal to each other, uh, which would make the circle, even though it's very, very unnoticeable, it would be lopsided. But if it was an even number of sides, 
these two sides would be equal to each other and you would not have a lopsided circle. And that is true no matter what the orientation of your object is. You can pick a side and opposite of it will be a point. So no matter how I orient my circle, um, let's say I changed it like this so that my, lop my point was over here and my also zero but not really side was over here, uh, it still exists. Even though it's not at the top and bottom and I wouldn't measure it that way, the circle would still be lopsided. So it doesn't matter how you orient it. Um, is this a valid proof? And is there anything like it already to back this up? Thanks, guys.